what's going on everybody welcome back to the mid-level media channel your hub for everything physical media and entertainment i am ken today guys look are you a mexican are you a mexican you're gonna have to decide before we get into this review of the mexico trilogy from arrow video guys i am so excited to present to you some robert rodriguez on the channel in 4k guys because look from Dust Till Dawn was, was canceled. We don't know where it is. The faculty delayed. We don't know where it is. But we finally got one Robert Rodriguez movie on 4K. I know Alita's on 4K as well. So I'm super excited to talk about that movie on 4K. We also got El Mariachi and Once Upon a Time in Mexico, both Blu-rays in this set. So you have a one 4K and you have two Blu-rays. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of controversy with the fact that those movies are not on 4K, but we are going to get into all that stuff, guys. Like this, this review is going to be multi-layered. Like we got lots of stuff to talk about with this release right here. Um, now I was lucky enough to get this one in early from Arrow Video. Now this does come out on August the 27th. Now it is available to pre-order on Amazon right now for $99.99. That's as time as of the time that I'm filming right now. I fully expect that price to come down by the time release date comes comes around because on Aero Video on their website it's seventy dollars and on Diabolic it is sixty four ninety nine. So that's the cheapest. Um, that it is right now. I want to let you guys know uh, all the uh, pricing options and everything that goes into this release. I don't want to steer you the wrong way. Now, of course, guys, I make money off the Amazon affiliate links. If you want to use that, you can. I will link that down below, but I will also link um, the Arrow Video website and the Diabolic website just in case that price does not drop. I want you guys to get the best price that you possibly can with this release right here. I am going to talk about the movies themselves. We're going to get into the transfers. There's a lot that goes in um, to the transfers of these releases, guys, for sure. We're going to talk about special features. I'll do an unboxing as well. Everything, guys. Everything the Mexico Trilogy. Are you excited? Because I'm excited. Before we get into it, though, guys, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, let me know your thoughts on the Robert Rodriguez Mexico Trilogy or El Mariachi Trilogy, whatever you want to call it in the comment section below. Which one's your favorite? How would you rank them? Let me know all that in the comment section below. So I'm going to I'm gonna try to talk about these films, just kind of give a brief overview on my thoughts on the movies. I don't want to like deep dive in every movie because we'll be here all day. Desperado, I saw when I was a kid. I saw it around the time, probably after I saw From Dust Till Dawn. I became obsessed with From Dust Till Dawn when I saw it when I was a kid. That movie just blew my mind. I was probably 12 or 13 years old when I first saw it. And I love the film. So I probably watched that first and then watched Desperado when I heard it was, was the same director. And I remember at the time, I don't know if I was thinking it was going to be a horror film like from Dust Till Dawn or if it was going to have vampires as well. But I, rem I just remember it disappointing me and I hadn't watched it since. So I was excited to jump back into it again here because I grew up with The Mask of Zorro as well. Like I loved Antonio Banderas. Obviously, Sama Hayek as well was in From Dust Till Dawn. So I don't know why I didn't like the movie more, why I didn't revisit it more. I probably should have, but I didn't. Once Upon a Time in Mexico, I saw that. I, I believe I saw that in the theaters back in 2003. And remember, I remember thinking it was okay. El Mariachi was a first time watch for me. So just getting into my thoughts on the actual films now. El Mariachi, I really enjoyed. It is an extremely low budget movie. It's it's like guerrilla style filmmaking. Like, and we'll get into that when we talk about the actual Blu-ray transfer. But it is an extremely low budget film. It's it's shaky cams, it's it's movements, it's like you're in the POV of the person, like you're right there. The way it's filmed is extremely low budget, so it's a very low budget movie, but I thought it was really fun. Um, I thought it had a really interesting like premise and setup as well with the guy being in prison and him you know, having issues with a drug lord and the drug lord tries to kill him in prison. He escapes and they mistake him for the El Mariachi uh, player. This is the guy walking around trying to get work playing the guitar because the guy from prison has a guitar case full of guns and grenades and stuff, so they mistake the El Mariachi guy as him. So it's a movie about him getting kind of stuck in the middle of this war going on between the two and him trying to like find his way out of it so it's a really cool movie though um and i did enjoy it quite a bit but it is an extremely like low budget film like it's not reservoir dogs low budget like it is very low budget so i do want to point that out 
um, as far as El Mariachi, not very cinematic at all. Now, jumping into to Desperado, like I, I thought Desperado was excellent. Again, if you want to compare it to a Quentin Tarantino film, I think it's pretty comparable to like, you know, Pulp Fiction or Jackie Brown. Like it's got Steve Buscemi in it. It's got, it's got a lot of the, the cast that you would be familiar with. Cheech Marin's in the film as well. Who's great? You got Salma Hayek, of course. Uh, Quentin Tarantino is in the film, also. Um, so it's got a really good cast of characters in it. Really great performances throughout. So I enjoyed the hell out of Desperado this time around. Some really great action. This is where Robert Rodriguez really cut his teeth on action. Really solidified himself as a more action-heavy filmmaker for sure. The opening scene is excellent with Steve Buscemi and the bar with Cheech Marin. Like that's the that's the best scene of the movie as far as I'm concerned because he's setting up the legend of the El Mariachi who is Antonio Banderas. Um, and he says the it was the biggest Mexican I've ever seen. Like I love the story he tells and you kind of flash back to Antonio Banderas like taking out an entire bar while he's telling this story. And I think it's really awesome. It's a great opening to the film. And, it, and I think Selma Hayek and Antonio Banderas have great chemistry. So I thought Desperado was really awesome, and again, it kind of made me sad that I hadn't been watching that film since I since I grew up, because, you know, what, Mask of Zorro is like a movie I watched over and over again, it's like, I would have loved Desperado too, it's like, why didn't I watch that movie uh, more growing up, so that's, that's definitely a regret of mine, I should have watched that movie more, really good movie, definitely a step up, you know, as far as uh, Robert Rodriguez as a filmmaker from El Mariachi, really good film. Uh, was Desperado. Now getting into Once Upon a Time Mexico, I remember the movie being okay when it came out. The movie's kind of a mess. It's kind of a mess. And I think honestly, it has to do with Robert Rodriguez and how he wrote it, how he edited it, because he tells the story and the special features and how the studio wanted him to make another Desperado film. And he literally wrote it in like a week or something. So he wrote the script like super fast and he, he shot the film in like, I don't know, like a two weeks or something, like a week or two weeks. And then he went to go make Spy Kids 2 and then came back and edited it. And he talked about how he was completely lost, like he didn't remember what he filmed. So it was kind of hard to cut it together. He kind of sells it as he pulled it off. But I, I after he told that story, I kind of was like, okay, that makes sense because the movie is super like all over the place. And feels like it gets so lost in its own like storytelling. Like things that are set up in the beginning don't pay off. Like just it's all over the place. It's all over the place as far as its narrative. I'm not the biggest fan of Johnny Depp. I do think he's very good in this movie. I think his character really brings a lot to the film. It's very unique. I don't love that he kind of takes away from Antonio Banderas. Because I feel like this is kind of his franchise after Desperado. And I feel like Johnny Depp's character kind of comes in. And takes the spotlight. But it, he, it's a cool character. I like the setup with him. And the arm and stuff. And him holding the gun under the table. I think all that stuff is pretty cool. Um, so he's good in the movie. Eva Mendez is in the movie. Some Hayek kind of comes back. But it's it's weird how they bring her back. So like, it, there's just a lot of weird things about this movie. The really jarring things about this film. As far as the script. And how things are being told. And how it's laid out there. It feels sloppy. Just as a movie. As a narrative. It's just a sloppy movie. Willem Dafoe is playing a Mexican crime boss. Which... I, I, you couldn't get away with that now for sure. So I'm surprised people don't bring that up. Visually, it's fantastic. Cinematography wise, it's fantastic. Like the movie has tons of great like set pieces in it as well that are fantastic. But the movie just doesn't like fully work. Like I enjoy it, but as a narrative, it just feels super sloppy and all over the place. And there's way too many characters that they set up and they don't really have any payoff at all. Michael, um, God, what's his name? The wrestlers in this film. Uh, Mickey Rourke is in the film and his character set up and they don't really do anything with him uh, throughout the movie. And there's just all kinds of that stuff going on in this film. So I enjoyed Once Upon a Time in Mexico, but I did not enjoy it. As, as Robert Rodriguez kind of described in the special features, I do not feel like that is his version of the good, the bad, the ugly. Like that's, that's, probably the weakest film of this entire trilogy in my opinion but getting into the actual transfers guys i will take these out of the box right now so i can kind of show these off as i'm talking about them so this is going to be a big controversy with this release and it's not the first time aero video has done something like this they've released box sets before where they've had blu-rays and they've had 4ks i think the yuan box set had one 4k and the rest were blu-ray of course the chucky set they were all 4k except for the first one and the documentary as well so they've done these kind of you know mix and match box sets i know 
the big thing with everybody is going to be, I don't want to pick this up and then they re-release them in 4K. I don't think you have to worry about that. I don't think they're going to do El Mariachi um, in 4K. I don't think they'll do Once Upon a Time in Mexico in 4K. So you probably won't have to worry about that. But I understand, like, if you grab that $15 uh, three-pack that they put out a few years ago of all these movies, uh, which I'm pretty sure, like, Once Upon a Time Mexico and El Mariachi are probably the same transfers as that set. And that's another thing to point out, guys. Aero Video did not do um, the work for these. They did not do the transfers. Sony did. So Sony did the 4K restoration on Desperado. And they also did the work on El Mariachi and Once Upon a Time Mexico. Aero Video had nothing to do with the transfers except for with the exception of actually authoring them to the discs. But as far as the actual transfers themselves, that was Sony uh, that did the work here. So I'm pretty sure these are probably the same scans that were on that $15 Blu-ray triple pack that came out back in 2021, which I think was 30 when it came out, but it is down to 15 um, right now. Now, I want to talk about this, and is it justified that they did these movies in Blu-ray instead of 4K? I think with El Mariachi, and I remember complaining about this when it was first announced. I was like, oh, this is crap. I was with everybody else. I was like, why are we only getting one 4K, and why are the other two on Blu-ray only? Now, El Mariachi was shot on 16 millimeter, which, you know, we've had 16 millimeters be upgraded to 4K, and it's been fine, right? Basket Case came out earlier this year on 4K, but Basket Case is a much more cinematic movie. As low budget as that is, it's a much more cinematic movie than El Mariachi. El Mariachi, and I kind of struggle to say this because I know people are going to take it the wrong way. It's almost found footage, the way that it's filmed, the way that it's shot, the way that it, just the way that the camera is, it's very jarring. It's very like guerrilla filmmaking. Like Robert Rodriguez had this camera. He was running around shooting, running and shooting this film. It The style of the movie, like stylistically, is is all over the place like it is running it is it is jarring camera movements and it is like really up close facial shots and just the way that the camera moves and stuff very low budget very low grade again on 16 millimeter but it's not cinematic at all it's very unique the way that it's filming very shot but it is not a traditional uh looking film the way that it the way the cinematography is done in this movie so I get why, and this could have totally been Robert Rodriguez that that was the deciding factor in this. I get why he wouldn't want this movie come to 4K because it could highlight certain flaws in the actual filmmaking if it did. Now, as far as a Blu-ray, not the best Blu-ray, but again, it, it has to come down to the original materials. You know, maybe they did the best that they could. You know, there are spots where you see lines and holes in the film, and it's just it's not great as far as the actual quality of the Blu-ray, but. I have to trust that Sony and Arrow, like that collaboration, I don't see them half-assing it. They did the best that they could, I'm sure, to restore this movie the best way that they could. But like I said, it's a very uh, just visually like jarring film that is all over the place visually. So I don't know how much a 4K would have helped this movie out. And getting into Once Upon a Time Mexico, we'll talk about Desperado last. Um, this was one of the first films, from my understanding, that was shot digitally, or it was kind of in that early stages of movies being shot digitally, moving from, from actual film, 35 millimeter, to uh, digital. So Robert Rodriguez talks about this in the special features, how he went to visit George Lucas. Um, and I think this is around the time he was doing the Spy Kids movies. Of course, I talked about that. I referenced that a little bit earlier. Um, he visited George Lucas and then George Lucas kind of, you know, showed him the light towards digital. And when Robert discovered digital, like he fell in love, like he liked being able to shoot movies on digital. He kind of saw a film at the time. I don't know if he still feels this way or not as kind of a pain in the ass. So like he was all for shooting digitally. So that's how he shot Once Upon a Time Mexico. So this was shot on digital and it was shot in 1080p. Now we've heard before that that doesn't necessarily uh, translate to a great 4K remastering. Now I'm sure some people will say, well, why didn't they just upscale it to 4K? They've done that for so many other films, added HDR, added Dolby Vision. Again, it could have just came down to Robert Rodriguez and the fact that this mo movie wasn't shot on film. They couldn't do a proper 4K restoration like they could with other movies. And he just decided, look, it looks good enough and we don't need to spend the extra money to upscale this to 4K. Could have been as simple as that. Now, I will say with this one, the Blu-ray looks really good. It's actually kind of stunning how good the Blu-ray looks on this. Like There are moments where if you didn't tell me it wasn't 4K, 
I might not have noticed because it looked that good. But I do think there would have been benefits to uh, adding some HDR, some Dolby Vision, upgrading this one to 4K. There's some incredible like visual spectacle set pieces. Like this movie has a really like interesting setting to it and some background imagery that just looks really great aesthetically like where this movie is and some of, some of the cinematography and some of the settings like i said guys just looks fantastic so many bright vivid colors that will look great with the hdr so i think in 4k upscale to 4k i think this would have looked good and i would have liked to have seen arrow video do this one or sony do this one in 4k um, I think that they could have pulled it off, but for whatever reason, they decided not to. The Blu-ray looks really good, though. I'm not really complaining, but I think that they could have done this one um, in 4K. Now for the big one, guys. So Desperado, this is a native 4K restoration with Dolby Vision and HDR10. And, oh my God, this is in contention for me, guys, for a 4K of 2024. Like, if I was doing my top 10 4Ks, like, this would probably be on the list. If I was doing top five, this one would probably be on the list. Uh, Sony did the work here, guys. Sony does always does a great job with 4Ks. You combine that with Aero Video, and you get a match made in heaven. Like this is one of the best looking 4Ks I have ever seen. Like right from the beginning, Steve Buscemi walking into the bar, everything just looks so fantastic, so clean and crisp, and those colors are really enhanced and so vibrant. And that HDR is just firing on all cylinders, guys. You got Steve Buscemi, close-up shot, Cheech Marin. Like, the skin is so detailed and defined. It just looks fantastic. You have a nice grain structure to remind you that you are watching an actual film from the 90s. And everything about this 4K is just perfect. I cannot find or point out a single flaw in it. So I'm a Hayek in 4K, guys. This just highlighted to me how badly I need From Dust Till Dawn on 4K. Because aesthetic-wise, visually, I think that From Dust Till Dawn is kind of comparable to Desperado, and I can just kind of see it and visualize it. So if anything, like Desperado kind of made me sad on 4K because I was thinking about From Dust Till Dawn on 4K, and I was like, God, that would look so gorgeous in 4K. Can we just have it? And can we have it from Arrow Video? Like, give it to us from Arrow Video. Nice, chunky box of uh, From Dust Till Dawn. I need it so bad. Um, in my collection, in my hands, in my eye holes to be able to watch and, and witness uh, firsthand. But Desperado, guys, do not worry about the 4K for this one. Like, this is almost worth the price of admission. Like, it is that damn good on 4K. This looks so spectacular. Now, you can get Desperado by itself, guys. It's $40 if you want to get a steel book. It doesn't have a regular, like, standard release with a slipcover. But you can get it with the, uh, the steel book 4K release if you just want to get Desperado on 4K, which... Looks absolutely magnificent, guys. Like I, like I said, I cannot find a single flaw with Desperado in 4K. Incredible action set piece moments, like I talked about, explosions, like all that stuff just looks so great in 4K with that HDR. So no complaints as far as the transfer on Desperado. I thought it looked just fantastic. Now, getting into more of an in-depth unboxing here, I will put the the slip cover back on my case right here. And um, I, I like the slip cover, guys. I much prefer it than to a J card. Like they put the J card in the back. I take that off. I throw it in a box. I like the fact that this stays on the release. So I am all for Aero Video continuing this trend of keeping the slip covers over the box set. I think that's super awesome. But really great artwork on this. You twist it to the side. You got the Mexico Trilogy with the titles of the film. On the back, you got all the contents. This is a four disc set. So Desperado does have two discs. You have the 4K and you have the Blu-ray, guys. So that's a 4K release that has the Blu-ray, which Aero Video doesn't do um, as often. And all the features are on the 4K as well. You don't have to switch it to the Blu-ray, but they did offer you uh, the Blu-ray as well. So this is a four disc set right here. And that has all the special features, the specs and all that stuff. You take it out of the slip cover. You got a nice box release right here with the same artwork. You got the side with the titles, and then the back is just uh, blank right there. And uh, let's let's show off this poster, guys. Next, you got a poster, which is pretty damn cool, um, because you have this poster, which is the Aero Video artwork, and then on the back, you have this poster that uh, Robert Rodriguez drew himself, and this is an El Mariachi promotional poster that he drew himself back in the day so that is really cool they talked about this in the special features so i thought that, that was really cool that they included that with this release then you got a nice booklet with all uh, with some nice uh writings on the films as well and i forgot to mention danny trejo but it's always nice seeing danny trejo in these movies and he's excellent um in desperado like throwing the knives and stuff so freaking cool 
Um, but yeah, you flip um, flip it around. Some good stuff there and there. And that has all the information about the transfers and the fact that they were done by uh, Sony as well. So we'll get into the individual cases. These all have reversible cover art. You got El Mariachi right here. Flip it to the front, flip it to the back open it up and i think they all have posters on the inside as well which is pretty damn cool now they are mini posters uh but they are two-sided posters you have the original artwork of of el mariachi on the back there's a, there's a lot in here guys you got the disc art right there of the movie and you got a little promotional card in here as well flip this around bam i, I like that original poster i think that's super cool so we'll put that to the side. You got Desperado right here. You got the front. You got the back. Open it up. You also do have a poster in here as well. And bam, you got the uh, the new artwork that Arrow Video did. Like the interior, not the artwork on the front, but the artwork for the individual cases is freaking spectacular. And I didn't know if they were going to do that or not. So it, it is much appreciated. That's the original poster right there. And then on the inside, you got two discs. Like I said, you got the 4K disc and you got the Blu-ray disc right there. Close that up, and then we got, uh, oh, we got reversible cover art, guys. We got reversible cover art, and you flip it, and you have the original artwork from uh, Desperado right there. You also got Once Upon a Time Mexico with the artwork on the front. You got the artwork on the back, or not the artwork, but the uh, information on what's inside. Open it up. You got some cool disc art. You also have a poster in there as well. And then we'll flip this and show off the original poster artwork which does feature pretty heavily right there in front and center guys johnny depp johnny depp is in that movie and he was pretty that was at the height of the johnny depp popularity i feel like 2003 like johnny depp for a lot of people could do no wrong um at that point in time so it makes sense that robert would want him in this movie of course johnny depp is a huge actor all through the 90s but i feel like 2003 like he really like popped off again getting into the special features here guys so all three of these, now there's a lot of special features. There's other interviews as well. But the real highlight here is Robert Rodriguez gives in-depth interviews um, on all of these movies, on all of these discs. So he has a special feature for El Mariachi. He has a special feature talking about Desperado and a special feature talking about Once Upon a Time Mexico. And he talks about how he filmed all those. He talks about the creative process. He talked about what was going on. So these are really like in-depth, great interviews with Robert Rodriguez, and I'll be honest, they might be some of the best interviews I've seen on any physical media release all year. They are definitely worth uh, part of the price of admission for sure, because I think together they're all around 40 minutes long. So you basically got Robert Rodriguez talking about these films for 40 minutes. His name has been so hard for me to say like this entire uh, review, guys, but I'm doing my best here. But his interviews are great. Like Those are great, spectacular interviews. I think on El Mariachi, uh, you got a newly filmed. Oh, you got the newly. You got an interview with the actual actor. You got the guy playing El Mariachi in the movie, which is a really good interview as well. And you also have a newly produced featurette on the music in the film, uh, featuring interviews with composers Eric uh, Guthrie. Uh, so you got all kinds of great stuff. You got his short film Bedhead from 1991 that he shot with his siblings. You got 10 minute film school and archive featurette produced and narrated by Ro Rodriguez. Um, so there's archival stuff on here as well, guys, quite a bit of archival stuff. And there is a lot of newly filmed interviews. I would say in total, I think there's at least three or four interviews, uh, new interviews for every single movie in this set. I'm trying to go through guys, cause I don't want to mislead you or anything. Uh, but yeah, Robert Rodriguez interview and you got newly filmed interview visual effects. So yeah, I think that once upon a time, Mexico has two, uh, but Desperado, I feel like has, uh, one, two, uh, three, four, um, five. This one actually has an interview with uh, Gareth Evans, um, who did uh, the Raid movies. So he has an interview on Desperado. So there's five on De on uh, Desperado. There's three on El Mariachi, and there's two on Once Upon a Time Mexico, and plenty of archival stuff for Mexico as well. So there are ten new uh, special feature interviews in this set, guys. And I don't know if there's any new audio commentaries, but there's a bunch of audio commentaries, past audio commentaries on here to sink your teeth into. So they really, guys, look, I get it. Like if you bought that Blu-ray set, like it may just be worth it to you to upgrade Desperado 
on 4K for 40 bucks to get that steel book. And even if you haven't bought that set, like that set's $15. So get that set for $15. Get the Desperado 4K steel book. That's going to be $55. Still going to be cheaper than getting this for 65, 70 bucks or 100 currently on Amazon. But like I said, that price will probably drop. So I get it if you want to go that route. If you're just interested in the films themselves, you'll get all the transfers for $55 if you want to go that route. But if you want the extra stuff, guys, the 10 new interviews in here, three of which are with Robert Rodriguez, it's excellent stuff. And I think that that is worth the 10 to 15 extra dollars in and of itself. It just, it all depends on how much you actually value uh, special features and stuff, guys. So I think for $70, I can definitely recommend this box set. I think there's enough meat here uh, for sure for that price when you account all of the extra features as well. I know some people are going to be disappointed that the two movies are on Blu-ray, but like I said, I don't think those are going to be upgraded anytime soon. So that's my review of the Mexico trilogy, guys. Sorry, I went a little long here, a little long-winded, but Please understand there was a lot to get into uh, with this set and I like to do my due diligence for you guys as well. So thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on those bell notifications for all future videos and follow me on all of my social media accounts. Those links are down below in the description and we'll see you next time.